Shura Ngadashi. This is a holy place. Shusha is the homeland of every Shusha citizen. We cannot live without Shusha. Shusha is the cultural capital of Azerbaijan. On November 8, 2020, during the 44-day Patriotic War, the city was liberated from a nearly 30-year-long illegal Armenian occupation. The liberation of Shusha was a successful military operation of the Azerbaijani army under the leadership of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief President Ilham Aliyev, which predetermined the outcome of the war. The territorial integrity of the country was restored. From ancient times, the city of Shusha and the surrounding mountains terrain was one of the most strategically important locations in the Karabakh region. On May 8, 1992, Shusha was occupied by the armed forces of Armenia. In an unequal battle, the city was defended by volunteer battalions. In the battles for defense, 195 people were killed, 165 were injured, 58 people were captured or taken hostage. Ramiz Gambarov is a national hero of Azerbaijan. In 1992, during the First Karabakh War, he created the Shusha Self-Defense Battalion from volunteers. On April 29, he was seriously wounded in a heavy battle and died on April 30 on the same year. Today, we, together with the world-famous photographer Riza Digati, came to visit his family. Hello. Hello. How are you? Welcome. How are you? Good afternoon. Very nice to meet you. This way, please. Thank you. Ramiz Gambarov was born in 1962 in the city of Shusha. After graduating from the Shusha Secondary School, he was drafted into the army. In 1986, he entered the Azerbaijan University of Architecture and Construction, but couldn't complete his education as the war began. Ramiz, like hundreds of brave sons of Azerbaijan, went to the front to defend his native land during the First Karabakh War. Mm. Gambaro family remembers Ramiz with great warmth. With his kindness, honesty and sincere love for the motherland, from early childhood he endeared himself to those around him. He loved Shusha with all his heart. He breathed and lived the city. My brother never doubted that sooner or later Azerbaijan would come to victory. He chose his path and was not going to turn it off, no matter what it cost him. He forever inscribed his name in history. When the city of Shusha was liberated from many years of Armenian occupation, the brother of the national hero of Azerbaijan, Hafiz Gambarov, was able to visit his home again, or rather what was left of it. When he saw the ruins of the house where they spent their happy childhood with Ramiz, he couldn't hold back his tears. How could they know then that the war would come to their home and their family and would forever change everyone's life? We were four brothers and one sister. From the second window to the end of the building, this was our part of the house. There was a common room. And those two rear windows were ours too. Two families, our neighbors, used to live on the ground floor. And then there was our little annex. We dined in front of it, and behind it we stored firewood for the winter. 
We had a large family, and my father built a long way around here, where we like to gather together. Many guests, sometimes 20 to 30 people, were coming to visit us. Do you remember your childhood? How did you all play together here? Yes, of course, we had a good childhood. There were turnstiles here, and here mulberry trees grew. There was a small fence built of stones. Ramis always climbed over it to the neighbors. You see those two windows. There was Ramis' room, where he played tar. So it turns out that your house was destroyed after you left this place. When the war started, a shell fell on our house, resulting in a hole. My father made repairs. This was at the end of 1991. We continued to live here. Do you remember your last day in Shusha, the day when you left the city? On May 1st, we buried Ramis. After that, for seven days, Shusha was not subjected to shelling. On May 8th, we wanted to take out the women who were in the house. But at 3 o'clock at night, they opened fire on us. Shusha was fired from three sides, from Chopkani, from the Red Bazaar and from Hankendi. There was cases when the rockets collided with each other right in the sky. To such an extent, there was a strong shelling of the city from different sides. We took people out in such conditions. All our property, all things, everything left here. Can you stand here in front of the house? I want to take a photo of you. Stand here, please. I will take one of your photos in front of the house. Rizadigati himself clearly remembers his last meeting with Ramiz Gambarov in Shusha. In April 1992, when the city was under siege by the Armenians, he had his last tea in the city square. The photo he took that day, entitled The Last Tea in Shusha, became one of the most famous not only in Azerbaijan, but also in the world. I'm here in, in the Shusha, and I wanted to say goodbye to Ramiz Gambarov and uh, Rasim Yusuf and other friends. I said, OK, while we are going here, I have to cross and walk the mountain Jidir on food, and maybe they will shot me, the, the, the snipers, because they tried three times to shot me before. And uh, then you are staying here, I don't know what will happen to you. So maybe let's just forget everything and sit down and have a tea together. And that's where, the, that's where we stand it here, if you can see, sitting over here and having the last tea here. Here is a Ramiz that pouring the tea for me. And this is the hat of the Rasim Yusufov. That, uh, so we were three of us, and actually, this is a special tea that the Azerbaijani they have, which is called kahliot. Mm. That's why it's not uh, the, the color is a little light, light uh, the, 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 because this was a, a lot of the kahliot, and obviously uh, we sit in this table, and uh, so there were you can you can even feel those people here sitting there. It was a sad atmosphere. It, you, you had a feeling that those people thinking that this is the last times of what they're saying here. Yeah, this is the last days. So that's why it was a, like frozen in time. So you just enjoyed the moment? They were just, yes, uh, the talking about non future, but without having any hope to the future. They were talking about the friends that just died. They were talking a lot about the family that when they have left here, they were shot by the Armenian. So this was a little, quite very sad moment, sad talks. But as you, you remember in the pictures with Ramiz and everybody, well, they had hope actually. They always, in this moment of the, the, the more difficult times in the war, then you see the how 
people have a big heart and they You were totally sitting did. next to uh, Ramiz Gambara. Could you remember something from your conversation? Uh, uh, most of our conversation was that he always was telling that I will defend the city on the, the, my last block. Always saying that nobody will pass here till I'm alive. And he was a really good commander. I had an experience of the other commander in different countries, different wars. He looks very young. He looks, you know, joyful always. And this is one of the, uh, as I, I could say, the the sign of a good commander is always joyful and uh, having very friendly conversation with the people. And uh, so Ramiz was the same. And he was joking, saying that, can you imagine? Uh, believe he was telling to Rasi mother. Can you, can you believe that our picture is going to Paris? <laughs> <laughs> so you made possible all these so, pictures to yeah, go to Paris. I, I went to me, I brought the pictures to Paris and I always loved this thing. He was also telling to everybody that, uh, hey, uh, wait, wait here, you, this is the pictures for Paris, <laughs> <laughs> for France. On December 28, in 2020, 28 years later, Riza Digati returned to the liberated Shusha and Drangti, looking at the city of Hankandi on the top of the highest hill. During the years of occupation of Shusha, the ancient mosques, monuments of culture and history were destroyed. The main goal of the Armenian invaders was to erase any reminder that these lands belonged to the Azerbaijanis. The bust of the brilliant personalities Kurshid Banu Natavan, Uzir Hajabeli, and Bulbul, who have adorned the city for decades, were shot, dismantled, and sent to Georgia for selling as metal. It was only thanks to the efforts and intervention of national leader Haydar Aliyev that they were brought to Baku. A memorial the executed monuments appeared in Azerbaijan National Museum of Art. Many years later, on January 14, in 2021, they were brought and reinstalled in Shusha. Today, only photos kept old memories alive. Here we are at last. Look at the photo. This is the same tree that we see now. And on this very spot, there was a square in front of the House of Culture. Here is Karim, here is Ramiz, here is you and here is Umud. These people are no longer alive. And this is Rasim Yusufov. He was a volunteer from Shiki. We found his family. The house of culture we see it in the photo was located right here. Yes, right here. There was an entrance. There was one room here and a common room over there, where films or theater performances were shown. Upstairs was a guest room. And here was the bust of Bulbul. I want to show you one more photo. Look, this is a bust of Uzair Hatibeli. It used to be right here, and around it, on the wall, there was a logo of the House of Culture. Remember, at that time they only gave out one loaf of bread per person. A very beautiful shot, a historical shot. I took a photo of these two children right here. The road from the House of Culture led straight down. I came here after liberation of the city of Shusha from occupation. There were pigs everywhere. They were kept right here in park. Can you imagine? The House of Culture was destroyed and pigs were kept in its place. See the pictures of these children? It was wartime. They smile, but their eyes are sad and their clothes are all worn out. I want to show this photo against the background of the bust of Uzair Hajibeli. Look, bullet marks are visible on the bust of Bilbul. There's even a bullet here. Here is a bullet went through. Here's another shot. Another one upstairs. They shot right in the eyes. And here the bust of Bulbul. You see, the bust of Bulbul used to be located right there. 
next to the house of culture. Look what's happened to him. Bullets holes here and there. There's one footprint here, a bullet hole. And here, two footprints at the top. For centuries, Shusha has been famous for its rich cultural life, literature, music and architecture. Shusha was called the Conservatory of the Caucasus, the singing city. In the 17th-19th century, the Shusha Mugam school was developed here. Ramiz Gambarov was able to form a resistance battalion to defend the city, and at the same time, with his music, he inspired volunteers to new feats. He played guitar very well, especially Mugam and the composition Sarigelin. When he was playing, passers-by stopped to listen to him. He played with all his heart. Next to the house of culture, there was a hall with an old but well-tuned piano. The last time he played the famous composition of Rashid Bepidov La La La. About 50 people gathered to listen to him. The famous composer Suleiman Askarov wanted him to enter the conservatory, but the war began and Ramiz went to defend his homeland, such as Spain. On April 29, 1992, during the next battle, Ramiz Gambarov was wounded. He was taken to the hospital and underwent emergency surgery, but on April 30 he died. His relatives buried him in the alley of Martins in Shusha. His body rests in the mass grave. Fearing possible barbarism and desecration of the grave by the Armenian invaders, before leaving the city, the Gambaro family removed everything from this place that could indicate a burial. For about 30 years, they couldn't set foot on this land due to the ongoing occupation. There were three lines of graves. There are 21 graves in total. After the liberation of the city, our president Ilham Aliyev instructed to protect this place, where the alley of martyrs will be in the future. There is a cemetery not far from here, but it's in a very bad condition. This is real barbarism. Do you know exactly where Ramiz's body is underground? No, it's a very difficult question. Perhaps when everything is restored here, we will determine this. But it will be difficult for us to be present at the exhumation of the body. People feel pain when they just visit the cemetery. But here it's almost a re-experience of all the pain of that time. Ramiz Gambarov was posthumously awarded the title of the national hero of Azerbaijan. A street has been named after Ramiz Gambarov and several films have been made. Perhaps our film was also able to shed light on the fate of one of the several thousand brave sons of Azerbaijan whose life was interrupted by the bullet of an Armenian militant who stepped on a foreign land with a weapon in his hands. The long-awaited victory gave peace to the tormented Azerbaijani land. The soul of the dead soldiers rest in peace. The tears of bitterness of loss in the eyes of the forcibly displaced people became tears of joy for gaining the land of their ancestors. After almost 30 years, the Gambara family breathed a sign of relief, because now their native Shusha is free, which means that the soul of Ramiz Gambarov has found peace. Would you like to come back to live here again? Of course, my heart, my soul is here. I'm ready to die for this land. This is a holy place. For me, there is nothing dearer. People usually say, where you live, there is your motherland. No, Shusha is the homeland of every Shusha citizen. We cannot live without Shusha. Only God knows how we live all this time. 
Yes, we had everything in Baku, but for 30 years, we dreamed of returning home to our native land.